I'm very pleased to be here on My Magical Thing with Roz Draper, magical practitioner, coach and group facilitator, sister of the Red Tent, community worker and walker of the woods. Roz, it's lovely to have you here. Thank you, June. It's lovely to be here. Well, Roz, please may we see your magical thing. You may. Here it is. I'll hold it up. So hopefully you can see it. This is a portable altar cloth. Um, it rolls up so I can kind of take it around with me and ties up. It's decorated with various different beads and stars and gems and thread. And when I was making it, I wasn't really sure what it was going to turn out to be, how it would look. I had a load of stuff. Some of the stuff had been given to me. Some just came out of my old workbox. Um, some were from previous projects. But as I started making it, it turned into the, the wheel of the year. So we're starting with winter up here with silver thread and the moon and stars and glass beads. And then we're coming round to spring, getting a bit brighter, some mother of pearl buttons maybe there, snowdrops, into summer, golden, more colour, and then down to autumn where we've got bone beads, so a bit of decay going on down here. And then around the sun, which has an amber bead and is made out of golden ochre. Um, and I think I might have had in the back of my mind the Nebra Sky Disc, from the Stonehenge exhibition last year. Mm -hmm. And um, because it's turned out to have constellations in it too. Um, yeah, and I wanted to say something about the thread in particular. So the silver thread and the white thread came from other projects. So like the silver thread was to do with a, a project to do with a knight. But the golden thread, which is here um, and around the sun came from the old workbox, which belonged to my grandmother and is now my workbox. And this silk thread was in that, and it's probably, it might be 60 or 70 years old, that thread, and it's just been tucked away, waiting to be used. And it, it's only when I kind of did all that that I realized what, what was kind of emerging into the altar cloth. Not just things I thought about, but things that my grandmother probably would have thought about and stitched. You know, and I love the fact that it's got that connection back to her as my favourite ancestor. So, yeah, that's my magical thing. Ross, that's delightful. When when did you make this magical thing? Was this like I over made... a period of time? Was this really no, recent? No, I made it. Yeah, it's quite a recent thing. So I've been making things a bit like this. So a lot of bags and pouches and embroidery for a while. And... Um, yeah, it's just kind of escalated. I, I think this is probably my favourite piece so far, but I've got other pieces planned. And again, it will be a mashup. It'll be like a cultural mashup of stuff that I know, stuff I've discovered, stuff that's hanging around the house, and maybe even stuff I buy, but I try not to buy too much. You know, there's like, there's a bit of a trend in there to get all your stuff, buy all your stuff. There's so much out there on Etsy, and it's all really lovely and beautiful and wonderful and tempting but I'm really into making it and reusing and, you know, just using the stuff that you've got, make the stuff rather than buy the stuff. If you can. I think discovering spontaneously in junk shops or um, in the floor of the forest, your magical thing or creating particularly from that kind of ancestral thread, your magical mm -hmm. thing is when possible the best way of doing it i agree yeah yeah well ros draper thank you very very much for taking the time to share with us your magical thing can we have another little look at yeah, this sure. cloth? in my mind it's a pentacle but then that's just the thing so, <laughs> or a shield even or it's just got it's beautiful yeah. really, really thank lovely. you thank you and it's really tactile as well i love that about it yeah thanks jules Roz, thanks very much, mate. See you soon. See ya. Much love.